Canadian Reptile Girl. I'm Annalise, and someday my face might be on your money. A while back, I did a video on top five coolest Canadian snakes. I think it's a solid list, and I stand by my picks. But are there other Canadian snakes worthy of a top five? I think so. So today we are doing a top five coolest Canadian snakes part two. Hobbs, no. You can watch the original video here. It's actually my best performing video behind the Clint's Reptiles Godzilla video. So odds are reasonable that you may have already seen it, but that was then and this is now. Who makes the cut this time around? Well, let's start at number five with the Blue Racer. This speedy serpent is not one that 99.9998% of us Canadians are likely to run into while out walking our mooses. The only chance of crossing paths with one is if you are one of the few hundred people who live on Canada's southernmost inhabited point, Pelee Island. Whoa, um, we're at this angle a little early this time, eh? I'll make it quick. I know we all think of Canada as being up north, and it is, but a lot of folks don't really realize that the southernmost inhabited part of Canada, Pelee Island, is farther south than the northern borders of California, Nevada, and Utah. In fact, it's only about 170 kilometers farther north than Clint's Reptile Room in Springfield, Utah. A couple hours north of Pelee Island, where I am standing, or sitting, right now, is still farther south than more than 25% of the United States. If I'm ever lucky enough to get invited to a snake discovery build off, I won't be going down to snake discovery. I'd actually be traveling about 300 kilometers north. Weird, right? Okay, way off topic for an impromptu geography lesson, but there you go. Where was I? Well, here. But, uh, oh, right, blue racers. Blue racers are, well, racers that are blue. Duh. They have the dubious honor of being very likely Canada's rarest extant snake with only a few hundred individuals estimated to remain in Canada, limited only to the eastern side of Pelee Island and western Lake Erie, where they will hunt in grasslands and open forests and edge habitats. These are gorgeous colubrids that can reach almost two meters in length. They boast an impressive speed that they use to escape from predators and chase down their prey rodents, birds, frogs, and lizards. They usually don't constrict their prey, they tend to just grab and overpower and then start eating them alive. Kind of like indigo and garter snakes. Yikes. They have this beautiful blue coloration, but this is all an elaborate ruse. They aren't blue. If you caught one of my videos about my Lake Chapala garter snakes, Lake Cobra here, the bluest snake I have, you might recall that with only a couple of exceptions, there is no such thing as a blue animal. Blue pigment is not produced by any animal except for one species of butterfly and one, maybe two species of fish that we know of so far. Blue racers, blue jays, that blue rhino rat snake from my expo video a few weeks back not actually blue. Aritophores in the skin, scales, or feathers of blue animals contain crystalline structures that will reflect blue light, but they are not actually blue in color. Need it? Whatever color they really are, the blue racers are stunning. In my opinion, they are one of the most beautiful snakes out there. They are exceptionally shy of people. Yeah, I know, most wild snakes generally give humans a wide berth, but they still take advantage of anthropogenic activity things humans do or make. Barns, chicken coops, attics, sheds, porches, even piles of garbage all provide places for snakes to hunt and hide, and many species will happily do just that. But that's just not the blue racer's jam. They actively avoid human-made structures or objects. If you're herping for blue racers, you're probably not gonna find these guys by poking around old barns. Speaking of herping for blue racers, I was very excited this past summer to take a ferry over to Pelee Island to camp for a few days and do some fishing and look for these elusive snakes. But it just didn't work out. Next year though, we're definitely going next year. So just watch out for that video, I can't wait. Due to their impressive size, beautiful color, and extreme rarity, and in Canada at least, they are Canada's fifth coolest snake this time around. Number four on today's list of coolest Canadian snakes is the smooth green snake. Another snake with a descriptive, if a bit unimaginative name. The smooth green snake is smooth and is green and is also a snake. 
this is not a smooth green snake. Well, he is a smooth green snake in that he is also smooth and green and a snake, but he is not the smooth green snake. He's smooth and green in texture and color, but is not a smooth green snake, you know, in, in species, but he is still a smooth green snake in that he is smooth and green and snake. But you get it. This is Hobbs, one of my Macklet's pythons. He's here because he's the greenest snake I have, and you guys love him so much, and I understand why. The actual smooth green snake is one that is pretty common from Canada's east coast across Quebec, Ontario, Manitoba, and Saskatchewan. They also extend down into the US all the way to Mexico. This is another snake that I have sadly never seen in the wild or in person. I've never seen one of these guys. No. They're actually pretty common where I live. I've just never seen one. I probably walked by dozens in my life and just never even knew it was there, which is too bad because I would have loved to meet one of these stunning animals. These gorgeous green noodles have avoided my eagle eyes by hanging out in tall green grass and up in bushy green, well, um, bushes, where their green coloration helps them blend in. Even if you happen to see one, they are super quick and can disappear in the blink of an eye. By the way, if you do go looking for these guys in the tall grass, a tiki like this can be an actual literal lifesaver if you happen to pick up a blood-sucking hitchhiker. They are slender and only get about a foot to a foot and a half long, with their tail making up between a quarter to half the length of the snake males being the ones with the larger tails. They are cathemeral hunters that are very, very active in warmer months, using their slender bodies to weave through grass and will hibernate communally over the winter, hunkering down in ant mounds and abandoned rodent dens or other spots that make a good hibernaculum. They are primarily insectivores, eating red-tailed hawks, great blue herons, rough-legged buzzards, bears, foxes, raccoons, and the common house cat. Okay, wait, no, that can't be right. Hang on. figured it out. When I was editing the script, I copied and pasted the predator list where the prey was supposed to go. They don't eat bears. Caterpillars, moths, ants, spiders, snails, slugs, and worms is what they actually hunt for. As insectivores, excessive use of pesticides is actually a big threat to these guys, both due to secondary poisoning and from their food supply being decimated. Humans suck sometimes. Number three on my list might surprise you, but stay with me. Like the smooth green snake, this snake is an insectivore, although they mostly stick to just slugs and worms. These little snakes rarely get over a foot long and you're not likely to find one just oot and boot, eh? <laughs> Get it? Because Canadian. They hang out under rocks where the slugs and worms are. I'm talking about the adorable Decay's brown snake. Their range is as massive as they are small. Extending from Quebec and Ontario down through just about the entire eastern half of the United States, down the entire east coast of Mexico, through Guatemala, Honduras, and into El Salvador. Basically, any terrestrial or wetland areas on the eastern side of North America and a bunch of Central America, you can find a decays brown snake. Yeah, I know these little tube dudes are pretty unassuming. Small, no flashy pattern, no kooky behavior. They're not uncommon or hard to find. They're just kind of there not being exciting. They're like the beige of snakes. Oh, which is actually funny because they're beige, usually. <laughs> I'm clever. So how did a snake like this end up making my list for coolest Canadian snakes? Well, they are adorable, so they get points for that. But one of my favorite things about the case has nothing to do with the snake itself or its behavior or anything like that. I want you to do something for me. Go to Reddit, 
find the subreddit what's this snake sort by new and count how many posts you have to go through before you see a decays brown snake usually with someone asking if it's a copperhead or less commonly a rattlesnake let me know in the comments how far you got i bet it'll be less than 10 for most people actually you know what it's much better this time of year the fall in the spring literally one in three posts are on these guys i mean okay i get it i i get that you're going to what's this snake because you can't id a snake i get it but is there a snake that looks less like a copperhead than this i mean i can understand confusing it for a garter snake like roy here but if you have dangerous snakes where you live you should at least have a rough idea of what they look like yeah there's this new thing called situational awareness in any case, these little noodles are clearly in desperate need of some exposure and a spot on one of my top five lists is a pretty big deal and might just raise their profile, hopefully. One other cool little tidbit of info on the Decay's brown snake is that they are the only snake in North America whose scientific name is a double honorific. The generic name, that's generic relating to the genus, not generic as in ordinary or standard. The generic name, Storaria, is in honor of zoologist David Humphreys Storer. And the specific name, specific meaning species here, Decay, is in honor of James Ellsworth Decay, the zoologist that collected the first specimen on Long Island, New York in 1836. My number two pick is another snake you see all the time on What's This Snake, only this time people are asking if it's a cottonmouth or water moccasin which I think is much more forgivable, seeing as this genus uses Batesian mimicry, a harmless animal imitating a dangerous one, to look like an actual cottonmouth. Can't really blame people for falling for an evolutionary adaptation millions of years in the making, eh? I am of course referring to water snakes. Specifically for this list, the common water snake, Nerodia sipidon, or stipidon, however you want to say it. This isn't a water snake, this is cobra, again, pulling double duty, as the only species of aquatic snake I have. Okay, you might think me a little strange, but these bitey buddies, the water snakes, are my absolute favorite snakes to catch in the wild while herping. Water snakes are so bitey and sassy when you first catch them, but they calm down really quickly and are great to share some space and time with on the bank of a river or shore of a pond. It's really a special feeling to have an animal go from that level of rawr to becoming calm, inquisitive, and gentle in your presence. I've been catching these guys all my life. Me and my dad, um, well, this snake is not my dad, but my dad's taking the video, and <laughs> um, we caught this water snake, and her blue eyes uh, means that she's going to shed soon. She's getting ready to shed. They live from Ontario down through most of the Midwest, along the East Coast, down to South Carolina and Georgia. Up here in Ontario, and when I lived in Indiana, I was free and clear to pounce on any water snakes I came across. When I lived in Virginia, where venomous snakes were not uncommon, not so much. Cottonmouths didn't really live in Richmond, where we lived, but their range was close enough that I had to have Dad verify it was a water snake before I could catch it. Or, even worse, he had to catch them first and then hand them over to me. Cool story, one of my favorite fishing spots in Virginia was these two lakes separated by a dam. Down at the bottom of the dam was like this greasy, nope, grassy floodplain with a few trees along the creek's edge. As you walked down to the creek, water snakes were literally falling out of the trees on us. Raining water snakes. It was so cool. These snakes' color ranges from light brown to almost jet black. They have banded markings along their body, also of different shades of brown. In the northern part of their range, like here in Ontario, they are often almost completely black, with the bandings being barely visible unless under the brightest love lighting and looking at just the right angle. They are active hunters that seek out their prey day or night. When hunting during the day, they are after small fish, frogs, worms, leeches, crayfish, salamanders, small birds, and mammals. At night, Nights, they concentrate their hunting efforts on sneaking up on minnows and other small fish, resting in the shallow water. I did a video on the hellbender, or lasagna lizard as I'd like to call them, a while back, and there was a running joke throughout about all the various names that they have. Well, the common water snake might just have them beat. 
In addition to common water snake, they also answer to banded water snake, black water adder, black water snake, brown water snake, common northern water snake, eastern water snake, common eastern water snake, northeastern water snake, common northeastern water snake, north american water snake, northern banded water snake, northern water snake, spotted water snake, streaked snake, water pilot, <laughs> water pilot, <laughs> and just plain old water snake. But whatever you call them, they are amazing and should always be called water pilot. And here we are at the number one spot. Taking the crown on five coolest Canadian snakes part two is the queen snake, Regina septimivitata. Regina meaning queen and septimivitata meaning seven stripes. An appropriate name given that they have seven stripes. Four running the length of their belly in a very rare ventral pattern, among snakes at least. One stripe on each side above the ventral scales and another dorsal stripe. These are aquatic snakes that hunt in and on the water's edge of creeks and rivers from southern Ontario south to the Gulf of Mexico. Here in Ontario, they are highly endangered with less than 10,000 estimated to be left in the wild in less than 25 sites across the entire province. Just to put that into perspective, you can fit one Texas and two Floridas with room to spare into the entirety of Ontario. Yeah. These snakes are nearly impossible to find in the wild. But guess what? I know a spot to find them. It's actually not one of the currently categorized spots where they have been known to be. Where I found mine is an historical site. One where they once lived, but no official sightings have been made in over 30 years. But every summer since I returned to Canada, I found some wild fishing here. I even did a herping video last year on these guys and found a beautiful gravid female. They give birth to live young, by the way, just like garbage snakes. You can check out that video here. I talk about their behavior and biology in detail there, but how about I give you a quick recap while you're here. These snakes are highly specialized and eat crayfish almost exclusively. The crayfish they eat need to be freshly molted crayfish whose shells are still squishy. Squishy crayfish are vulnerable and rarely venture out into the open, so the queen snake needs to actively hunt them down. They use their forked tongue to pick up the scent particles in the water and hone in on their prey. If you want to know how snakes smell and their tongues roll in that, there's the video here. Once they figured out roughly where the crayfish is, they wiggle in and under and between the rocks to nab them or flush them out and then chase them down. When you look at a queen snake's face, you'll notice that they have thickened scales particularly on their rostral scales, their, their upper lip, and then their brill scales, which are the transparent scales that cover their eyes, giving them a slightly bug-eyed look. This is to provide a bit of extra protection as they squeeze and scrape their way under and between rocks. It's not uncommon to find wild queen snakes with scrapes and lesions from this. They're tough little snakes. Because of their diet, queen snakes are found in rocky streams with fast moving, cool, clean water with minimal silt and sediment. Not only do crayfish need to be abundant, remember they can only eat freshly molted ones, so the population needs to be big enough that there's a reliable supply of squishy river bugs to eat. The water also needs to be clean enough so that they can sniff them out. Too much sediment or pollution and they can't survive. I know that in some parts of their North American range, they're pretty common. But for me, living in Ontario, I feel so privileged to have been able to share a bit of time and space with these gorgeous little aquatic snakes. Due to their rarity, beauty, gentle nature, and unique behavior, the queen snake rules supreme on this edition of My Coolest Canadian Snakes. That'll do it for today. What cool Canadian snakes would you have added to the list? Let me know in the comments. A special thanks to my patrons on Patreon. You guys rock. Your amazing and generous support allows me to continue making videos like this. My patrons get extra behind the scenes videos and they already know about the new additions to my scaly family. Check out patreon.com slash all Canadian reptile girl. Thanks. Please like and subscribe and until next time, remember to nurture all nature. Bye. You have a headache? I do actually. Ha. <laughs> Why was that your reaction? Oh, Dad, you're in pain. Aha. <laughs> it was more like a aha, not a ha ha. <laughs>
welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl. Ha ha! <laughs> I don't know. Don't ask. I don't know. It was just my instinct to go, ha ha! Can I get you to purr? Oh, she's purring. Do you hear that? She's purring. 